Oh my gosh, you guys, it is so hot out here. You can't touch anything without gloves on, man. Hold on. Yeah, look. I got gloves on too. I got gloves. It, yeah, it's crazy hot out here. Holy moly. I don't know about this dry washing thing, but you know what? We do this for you guys. So don't do what that guy was doing. <laughs> He's new. Total newbie mistake. Did you notice how the sand and stuff was blowing right in my face? That was terrible. I wear contacts. This is not. I'm gonna, if my eye doctor finds out about this, uh, it'll be a problem. Yeah. So what's that old saying? Work smarter, not harder, or something right. like that's, that. That's really why we like buckets because it so. gives so much more control, and the feed rate is better. Right, because the, um, the dry washer kind of runs out of feed, like from one shovel full. I mean, and it, you know, you just want it to be even. It's just like anything your sluice box or your dredge or anything. Yeah. You want an even feed. It has to be consistent. You, you you don't want your material to stop flowing into the into the riffle tray. Yeah, you, you don't get, want that. You get that's vibrations gonna, or something. Oh, it's terrible. And that's so you want to have that consistency. It needs to be constantly feeding. Don't let it go dry. And that'll always happen if you're just shoveling in there, unless you got the the uh, feed gate so small that that it keeps clogging up, and then you're gonna have even more problems. So it's a nightmare. Yeah. So here's what you really want to do: get some buckets. Uh, there's 23 Three. buckets here, 23. Yeah. and these are all filled up and ready to run. Um, and then it's going to be consistent. It's going to be fast. Yep. It's going to be less energy used. Correct. And um, and they're not clear full. They weigh about 50 pounds. Yeah. So, See? Um, about three quarters. Yeah. They're about 50 pounds, give or take. Now, I picked up these buckets on Craigslist, and uh, they were a dollar a piece from some paint place. That's excellent. A doll and these will last you like eight years. They don't break. <laughs> Dude, we've left buck these paint buckets from Sherwin-Williams and yep. Dunn Edwards. We have left them out in the desert for years stacked up because yep. we keep coming back to use them, right? And they and are still perfectly good yep. compared to every other bucket like the Home Depot, the Lowe's, the Tractor Supply, the Walmart. <laughs> they all if you suck. could get like two trips out of them, you know, you yeah. should celebrate. But these will last you years, and for only a dollar, I mean, I got a $20 investment here, so, yeah. and my time. But, yeah, it's worth it. It's yeah. so worth it. They're a little heavier, it's but you know what? It is no big deal. You're already lifting 50 pounds anyway. Yeah, they so are They are solid. Pounds. Yeah, they're the way to go, yeah. for sure. But, um, so anyway, it seems like, it seems like, some of you guys keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And we're really trying to show you, you have got to set your dry washers up properly. I know you're in a, yeah, I know you're in a hurry probably, and you want to get it set up and get running. Well, you need to take the time to do it right. So, um, you know, so we're going to go through just some quick, simple yeah, stuff. Basic, simple stuff. This is, we got to go over it again because we're seeing guys dry washing that have got material balled up on one side. And, and it's just, it's not good. this is unacceptable. We can't have you guys doing that. We want you to be successful. Yeah, it's all about success. So you could be losing substantial gold and obviously you're gonna hate that too. I mean, if you found out you lost half, you're gonna be upset, you know, yeah. you may need counseling. Yeah, so. man. And um, so obviously the dry washer, this one, the uh, Keen 151, it's already set up. We don't need to go through that with you. We'll give you a few pointers really quick. We're gonna go ahead and have some fun and we're gonna dry wash. It's going to be a hundred and like a 12 today uh, is what they said. It's not too bad. No. Uh, right now it's not bad. It's uh, like 94, 900. Yeah, it's over a hundred probably. But uh, anyway, Boulder Dash, why don't you oh, yeah, take it away? Let me just show how simple this is. So I want to make sure I'm in the bubble. See that? Look at that. Dead level. And oftentimes you want to find out, not all of these, sometimes they're bent. And yep. 
So double check. Good you know, point. So Some of them are installed a little bit off. Right, or sometimes they've been damaged from uh, moving and, and sometimes you hit them. And so, you know, maybe your third one is your level one, but some of these, no, see that one's still all right. But you see how it's dead level. And so that's yeah. gonna keep your gold in the middle versus on this side or this side. Yeah. This is the winning zone. This is the loser sides. <laughs> you don't want that. Don't be a loser. <laughs> dry washing loser so i'll make a t-shirt um uh, oh yeah you know and uh feed rate so this little uh, hole right here i don't have it open that much like i can barely get my finger in there and it, it feeds a uh, pretty good so you don't want to overfeed it you don't want to underfeed it you just yeah. want a good steady flow and so barely getting my finger in there and that's about it i can't get my knuckle past it so yeah. it's it's that's, it's not very big it's maybe like an inch by an inch yeah so. it's a it's a great starting point this your your finger size roughly is a great starting point if you have to adjust it from there because you're clogging up right. you know go right Close ahead sticks or whatever but but in general you're usually good so yeah so let's how about the rock oh yeah it's back there got my uh, patent pending rock that I just tie on the back so what I did was I drilled up top here and so I'm right in the middle in the past I used to tie to this side or this side but obviously in the middle just handles both sides and it made more sense but I've got about a that's about a four and a half pound rock on there and uh, it basically just holds it down so if for some reason I plug up and I didn't know it's not going to over vibrate on me this is actually holding my dry washer down so it can't lift itself from just its air and the vibration and once you do it you'll see that it makes sense it makes a huge difference in yeah exactly it's it's a fantastic idea let's talk about how hard it is to find decent cloth oh my gosh i don't want to it's depressing so yeah you know i had to change a bunch of cloth recently and I went to Joann's and all kinds of different places and it was either too thin or too thick and it was really hard to find the perfect stuff. I even bought some stuff from Keen and it was working and it was good, but it wasn't, if any dust at all, even for like 25 seconds ever hit my motor over there and sucked in there, it plugged me up and it was the end of, end of the game. Yep. And, uh, but yeah. I had some that was like some really good stuff and I could get dirt in there and I could go for 30 minutes and it would just kind of clean itself and it, it was fantastic, but. Yeah, you gotta be real careful choosing your cloth. You gotta be able to, you, you need to, we, we usually just blow through the cloth and see if there's resistance. If there's resistance, you don't want it. I'm telling you, there can't be any resistance because once a little tiny bit of dust gets in there, Plugs it. oh my gosh, it's gonna be horrible. And that's, that's part of a, Another little tip is don't let the dust get into your machine if you can help it. Right. Hopefully the wind's blowing one direction like it is today. We're heading that way, so this should never get any dust in it. And, you know, I've thought about putting longer hoses and things like that, but then you just can't get the CFMs through it enough. And yep. it just loses its, its power just traveling through the hose. Yeah. yeah. So apparently they figured out 10 foot's already about perfect, and that's all you can really get out of it. Yeah, and it's fine. I mean, as long as, you know, and if you have to reposition it, do it. Don't, don't, don't just let it go. Just, just move it. It only takes a couple minutes, you know, but, but you know, Hey, you know, some people, it's the little they, things, it's the it, things you aren't thinking about, you know, you just gotta, I don't know, I'm calling it common sense mining. It's just common yeah. sense. You know? Yeah. This it's, uh, it's critical. I mean, that kind of thing can ruin your day. If you're not, if you're not like, um, well, keeping up with it. Yeah. It, your, your dry washer just stops working. It just plugs the whole thing up. It stops spinning. The air can't get through. It just plugs everything up. It looks terrible. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So, uh, you know, those are some setups, man, and uh, uh, setup tips. It's important. Um, uh, the, a lot of people probably want to know about the angle of the riffle trays or the, the bottom box here. I mean, I don't know. What do you think about that? I constantly change it. Honestly, yeah. I, I don't have a spe special number. You know. Depends on my material. If it's gravelly, I go steeper. If it's less gravelly with silt, then I'll be a little little, uh, little more level. I definitely don't want to be level. That. <laughs> and that we've seen a, people do that. Yes, and it's not the right way. I don't know how they're even catching stuff. When I personally did it, I, I lost gold, and I found a lot in my tails. Yeah. But a little bit steeper, it just kind of creates the dead air space better and it gives a place for the gold to go to. Yeah. Gold's heavy. 
So it's going to fall right behind these little riffles and you're good yeah. to go. And you yeah. can go hours, you know, it'll, it'll hold your goal is if you're running it right. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, one day, uh, this was fairly recently, actually, you know, we still learn things too yes. every now and then, you know, and I'm just saying that because, I mean, yeah, we do this all the time, but we still learn little things here and there, it'll, you know, you'll just discover them. And uh, the other day we were running some material and and uh, all of our gold was pretty much in the top three, top two. And I went ahead and lowered the chain. I lowered that box about one link, if I recall. Just no, it was a half a link. Yeah. It was a half a link, I lowered it, and the gold started showing up in the fourth, fourth yeah, or fifth. Here. Yeah, it was it, it was amazing what that half a link did to that, that uh, dry washer. So just experiment with it. If you start seeing your gold down too low, maybe you do need to bring it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, think about that. And then air volume is always important. Volume, Try to, absolutely. you know, keep it, I wouldn't full blast it. No, no. But uh, you just want a good shake. Too much shake. Yeah. You just need to lift that dirt and keep it moving. That's what the steepness does. It keeps the, the dirt moving down and yeah. the gold falling. Yeah, remember that the air is stratifying your material probably more than the shaking. Correct. The shaking, it's a, just a little bit of shake. It doesn't need much. That's just like, it, to, to, to let it fall. That's all the shaking is actually doing, is to help let it fall and stay there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the air floats everything away, and yeah. So anyway, we're out here in the Mojave, and it is, uh, yeah, it's blazing, but we've cleared off a spot. Check this out. Yeah, So great. this morning, we worked on this little, look at how nice and flat this is. Yeah, wide. So, We've basically cleared off the whole thing of its rocks and all of its material, and we filled it up uh, 23 buckets. Those are ready to run. And um, and then this, we're going to vacuum. Yes, we are. And uh, probably get a, a whole bunch of fine gold off of it. Lots of fine gold. Yeah. Just real quick, we're going to give you some vacuuming some tips, okay? Um, you know, this is your, when you're down here vacuuming, this is your one opportunity to get all that gold. That's right. You get so, this one chance. Yeah, I mean, be thorough. You have to be thorough. And, uh, you know, if you want more gold, you got to vacuum really, really good. So good. So, Boulder Dash is going to show you what not to do. And then this is called... Elephanting? We elephant trunking. Elephant it's trunk. elephant trunking. Yeah. And so, yeah, watch I've this. I've seen this a lot of times. See, see how far away I am from the nozzle? And it'll just be like this. Yeah. You see, I don't have any control. I'm not cleaning. I'm just kind of elephant trunking. Just, you know, like I'm about to pick up a carrot or something. But it, that's not the right way to do it. Like, you need control. Um, another thing too is, you know, these things come with attachments. Do you notice how I don't have a darn attachment there at all? See this? I do. I, do. I took it and I threw it really far. So the reason I do that is because now it's flexible and look at this. I can easily bend this to get in cracks. So I'm making my own tool and not only that, but like it actually creates like a brush. Like so when I, let's get a close up of this. So when I go, it actually creates like a brush. Now look at all the bedrock coming off just from me kind of brushing. See how I'm close to the ground? It's like a brush. So, and then when these break, I just pull them off and I got a new brush. So it's it's really cool. It's a really simple concept. Yeah, excellent. So That's no, the right way. No elephant trunking. Yeah. And you, know, another... you don't want to be standing. If you, you want to get right down where you can yep. visually see the gold if you can. Because uh, if you don't, then you're gonna you're gonna miss it. You know, there could be a little sand, black sand pocket, and yeah. if you were too far away, you know, you'll miss it. Get those knee pads. Knee pads, good quality. You, if you're gonna be vacuuming, you better get yourself knee pads, or you're not just not gonna be. Not Freight. Well, I mean, like good quality. Like yeah. I think these are skateboarding ones. So nice. I'm well, not I was gonna, gonna do any ollies though. Oh, I was gonna get on a vert ramp here in a yeah, little while. Should, but another one I saw which I thought was crazy because you're just hurting your back, was they were basically 
they were up on a high point like some rocks. And then they were down vacuuming their elephant trunk in it like this. Now look oh. how awkward I look. Oh, oh man, just, that's gotta hurt. It hurts me already. I just yeah. I can't. Look how far I'm reaching. You know, you want to be like, obviously, you want to be like this, right on it. Right? Yeah, and you want to, and that, control. and obviously, that helps you see what you're doing. Yeah, I'm like right there. I can see anything. See gold. You can see, you know, where the heavies Gemstones, are falling out. Emeralds, whatever I need to see. Yeah. Yeah. If my shoes untied, I'm close. It's right there. So anyway, yeah, folks. Just some pointers. Knee pads and Super be cool. thorough. It's very Speed important. Like we said, it's your one opportunity to vacuum and get all that gold. Don't leave it for someone else. No elephant trunking. No. Let's get some rules. <laughs> Well, here it is. So we've got vacuum stuff. We've got overburden and we had about six or seven or so that we beeped. I think we got most of those on camera. And yeah. so we threw them all in there. This is what we got out of that little area. Yeah. Not a very big area and only took us a couple hours. And yeah, we got one really nice one. Yeah, that one's three tenths. Three tenths. That big chunk, see that thing in there? That one goes three tenths by itself. Yeah, these are just some wow. really chunky, chunky gold. Look at that. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That is some really, really nice looking gold. You know, some of the easiest working as far as dry washing, like the overburden ran good. The vacuuming was easy. It yeah. was great, man. Really easy it was work. Awesome. Man, that's, that's a nice pile of gold for just a couple couple hours it's amazing the fine gold in there is like just powdery small yeah you guys may not be able to see it but there is a nice line of fine gold it goes all in there. the way around yeah it's very good yeah so that's awesome all right well cool i think we're all wrapped up here like yeah let's go uh gold. we gotta take it's everything good. down and we're we're trying to get out of here before it hits 112 today and yeah um, yesterday we put up with the 114 out dry washing and that was really really difficult. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the dry washing video. It's you know I know a lot of people ask for them and it's always fun to make them and we got a little gold today so anyway all right we're gonna pack it up we're heading out of here. Best of luck on your prospecting ventures and we will see you next time.